This is the Into the Paddock podcast. But there was a curveball potentially thrown, and this was the dodged bullet um, that I wanted to talk about, and I think is going to be the main discussion point from this weekend, and had the potential to just ruin the whole thing. Cautions. <laughs> And when they are thrown, uh, I thought that we had moved past this because IndyCar had seemed over the course of the season so far to be pretty good with throwing cautions immediately and when they, when they were needed. But uh, we saw a bit of a, a fallback with this. Uh, in the closing stages of the race, um, I believe it was um, Marcus Armstrong, was it not, who'd spun in turn four, turn four or five, the uh, first few corner the, the second right uh, in the first sector yeah yeah um and technically he, turned four yeah something like that i don't know uh, y- y'all know where um <laughs> and he was facing the wrong way he'd lost the engine a caution was needed however one car had not yet pitted and was due a pit stop and once again indycar decided to do the thing that they used to do quite a lot and thankfully in recent race re- uh, recent months have stopped doing they decided to wait until said driver had managed to get into the pit lane before throwing the caution, thus allowing him to basically get a completely free pit stop because he didn't have to then worry about the outlap and everyone else had to go slowly. That driver was Joseph Newgarden. Oh, now, of course. I immediately want to preface this, and I will open it up to see whether you guys think the same as me, but I don't believe that this was done purely because it was a Penske car. I think this was just IndyCar returning to their stupid ways of not wanting to interfere with the race by interfering with the race and allowing the car to have a free pit stop. Um, I don't know. What, yeah. what, what, I, I, I get that because Penske own the series, anything questionable that happens with a Penske is going to open the door for a conversation about it being manipulated. The push-to-pass saga, this, you know, there's been multiple examples of it do, what do you guys think do, do you think this is is manipulated and rigged as every comment section is now saying <laughs> no, i i don't i don't think any car is that organized no <laughs> it's a valid point that's a valid fucking point <laughs> if you if you want if you want my honest opinion i don't think they're that organized no i i, I i'm kidding sort of um but I, I don't think I don't think it's some grand conspiracy to to prop up the the Penske powerhouse, you know. As I, as I said, I think a couple episodes or last episode, uh, you know, he is like the emperor, but we want him to do well. Mm. You know, we still want to see him succeed. His drivers are awesome. So, uh, but no, I think it was just IndyCar returning to their their good old fashioned selves. Gosh, I had a nice thought out <laughs> response, but that gone now. That is fantastic. <laughs> they aren't smart enough to pull it off. Whoa. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's not what I said. You pretty much <laughs> said I said that. I said they're not that organized. Uh, All right, that is there is a difference. <laughs> that's incredible. Oh. Uh, so so what I was actually going to say uh, is that this is an established pattern of behavior for IndyCar race officiating. They've done it with Penske cars. They've done it without Penske cars to the detriment of Penske cars. The team doesn't matter. They just like interfering by not interfering. They're they're like the watcher from the Marvel series. Like, oh, my, my job is to not interfere. But isn't you not interfering also interfering in some way if you know what's going to happen? So... Again, it's a, it's a, just a pure safety issue. We've said it time in and time again. One of these times, IndyCar officiating is going to get it wrong, and when the car is just stranded in the line of fire, even not in the line of fire, some circumstance will have it, so that car gets hit without a yellow being put out, and nobody wants to see that happen, but they keep behaving like this. Lightning will strike at some point. So Yeah, I was, I was about to say, speaking of lightning, what if it was raining? You yeah. Know? Yeah, not that that happens <laughs> ever at Laguna Seca, but what if it did? But it, it, it was a thing that you know they were doing it a lot over the last couple of seasons, and it was you were just waiting for the moment that their waiting made an an incident worse. And in this situation, you know, yes, it would have been tough for another car to end up where Armstrong did, but he ended up there. So anyone can end up there, you know. It's it's just a pure safety thing. I I don't give a fuck whose race gets ruined by throwing the caution. If you need to do a caution, 
throw the damn caution throw the damn yellow you know that that needs to be the priority in that situation you know racing is all about skill uh teamwork and fucking luck and if you're on a strategy that gets ruined because of an unforeseen thing like a yellow sod's law but chances are in a couple of races time you'll be on the receiving end of some good luck that's just fucking racing that's life so mm -hmm. to 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 try not to manipulate the race by fucking manipulating the race is, is horse shit. Now, what that did for Joseph Newgarden was it took him from, you know, he, he'd qualified 14th in the race. He was not having a good day. He was quite far back at the time. I think he was in the lower end of the top 20 um, prior to this pit cycle and then the cheap pit stop, which put him out in second place on fresher tyres than everyone else with no worry about fuel. So at that point, I was terrified. You know, if he wins this race, all of the progress of this race, having been really good, is going to be ruined, quite rightly, by these accusations of it being rigged. Mercifully, Joseph Newgarden decided to spare us that by being unbelievably mid for the um, final few laps <laughs> of the race. Uh, he was running in second and then went wide at the kink on the run-up toward the corkscrew. That cost him a few positions and moved him down to like sixth or something. And then a couple of laps later, he goes wide uh, there again, I believe it was, and spins all the way down to 19th. You know, Sweet. You, this is the thing with Joseph Newgarden this year. It's a complete feast or famine season for him. He's either doing fantastically or nothing at all. You know, to, to be <laughs> handed a podium at least, if not a win, on a silver platter and to then bottle it down to a 19th place finish. Wow. Yeah. That, that's an accomplishment new achievement unlocked maybe you know <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 unbelievable and and you know it was a similar uh, uh, exactly the same time scott mclaughlin made a pretty boneheaded move on his teammate will power which ended up costing him a lap in repairs and etc he ended up finishing 21st you know after the disqualification for the pair of them at st petersburg uh, but the glimpses of really good pace with you know mclaughlin winning in barber and uh, new garden winning the 500 of course we were talking about is there a potential for these guys to work themselves back into contention by the end of the season i think this tough result makes that you know they're they're almost 100 po well new garden is over 100 points behind polo now and mclaughlin is almost 100 points behind now Penske have a really good oval package we know that and the latter half of the season is is weighted heavily with ovals with two races Iowa two races at Milwaukee and Nashville to end the season but it's going to be you know they need to not have a bad race for the rest of the year if they want to fight their way back into it and driving like they did at Laguna Seca I don't think Newgarden or McLaughlin are going to be able to do that now I think Newgarden would rather be racing in the IRL right now where it's only ovals. <laughs> he, he, he just seems to have turned into an oval specialist. I know he, quote-unquote, won St. Petersburg, but outside of that, he's been pretty pretty terrible at all the road and street courses this year. Past couple of years, really. He's, he's turned himself into too much of a hunting an Indy 500 specialist to be the two-time champion of the IndyCar series, where you have to be good at everything. So I don't know, I wouldn't say he's, that he's that far off. Like, you know, he won Long Beach last year. He finished second at Road America. There's glimpses of it. I think, for whatever reason this year, I think Penske are just putting too much pressure on themselves and are cracking um, too often. You know, he, even last time out at Road America where he finished second, New Garden still dropped it in qualifying and had that massive shunt. Easy to do in the rain, sure, but you can't have these mistakes in IndyCar where the field is so close and it often the championship is decided by who has the least worst finish. You know, if you have three or four like Newgarden and McLaughlin have had, you can't really hope to do much more. I, I know Newgarden is very good at the ovals and I'm sure he's going to win a vast percentage of the oval races that are remaining in this season, if not all of them. I reckon he's genuinely got that chance, but he needs to cut out the mistakes everywhere else. This is the Into the Paddock Podcast.